on uh, uh, complex exponentials, it's, uh, it's quite useful at this point in time to consider a set of harmonically related uh, complex exponentials. That is, uh, the set of period, these, these are the set of periodic exponentials, uh, all of which are periodic the common period t naught. Okay, so what happens is that, for example, if you have a complex exponential um, where the exponent is constant to be purely imaginary. Okay, so if you recall in the previous uh, discussion on the complex exponential, uh, the complex exponential uh, was of the form e a t, and you say that okay, let's constrain uh, this parameter a to be purely imaginary and substitute a as uh, uh, in this expression a as j mega naught. So a necessary condition for such complex, purely complex exponential to be periodic um, is that it must uh, has e j omega t naught equal to one, okay? And where this comes from is if you recall, uh, if you uh, try to shift in time, if you try to uh, apply that time transformation, time the, trans the transformation of time shift, you delay it by a certain period capital T, okay? And uh, if you consider this t to be the smallest positive quantity, uh, real positive quantity, such that you can recover e j omega naught t back, then this uh, complex exponential is periodic. And the necessary condition is that e j omega naught t, capital T, should be equal to one. This equality should hold, right? So this is a necessary condition for complex exponential of the form e j omega t to be periodic uh, with period t naught, so so uh, this also implies that omega t naught can also be a multiple of two pi. Okay, so you see uh, what 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 we said before was that omega omega could be zero as well, but then you are dealing with the constant. Okay, so if omega is not equal to zero, if omega is not equal for omega not equal to zero, omega t naught should be equal to two pi, right? Because if you expand this in terms of Euler, uh, this becomes e j two pi. Then this becomes cosine two pi, sine two pi. Okay, you can expand this, and you can show that this is indeed equal to this is indeed the case. This is cosine two pi plus j sine of two pi. Okay, you see j sine two pi is zero, while uh, uh, cosine two pi is uh, is one. Okay. So this is equal to one. So uh, omega t naught should be equal to two pi, and and that's how we constructed the relationship between the time period and the and the rate of oscillations omega. So they are inversely proportional. Uh, the time period is t naught is two pi by omega. So that's the fundamental period, and omega happens to be the fundamental uh, frequency in this case. Okay. Okay. So um, what if uh, well this equality also holds. If uh, uh, I have an integral multiple of two pi, let's add a constant k, such that constant k belongs to positive real integers, okay? What if omega t naught is four pi or six pi? So this still holds if I have uh, integral multiple of two pi and the arguments of cosine and sine, so this, this quantity is still equal to one. So this equality still holds, okay? So such, uh, in, in this case, in this case, what we're going to have is that uh, omega, if you define omega naught against t naught as the fundamental frequency, then omega equals to k omega naught, uh, such exponentials, which is, which are going to have, instead of uh, omega, uh, you replace them by k omega naught, then omega is uh, the, uh, this becomes the, it makes the exponential, it produces a set of exponentials which are harmonically related, okay? So, uh, so uh, satisfying this condition, well, satisfying this condition uh, also implies uh, the meaning of this condition, and this condition is the same analytically if k is an integer, okay? It could be positive or negative. So, uh, if we define omega naught to be 2 pi by t naught, then omega must be an integral multiple of omega naught, right? So that is harmonically related set of complex exponentials, the set of periodic exponentials uh, with fundamental frequencies that are all multiples of a single positive frequency that is omega naught, right? So for k equal to zero, pi k of t, pi k of t, this represents the harmonically related 
complex exponentials. So for k equal to 0, pi k t is the constant, while for any other uh, value of k, pi k t is periodic with fundamental frequency k and fundamental period equals to t naught by k. You understand? You see, uh, what's, what's going on is, for example, you are going to have, uh, let's consider a sinusoid having a period. Uh, let's, let's consider one period. This is t naught, t naught a sinusoid. So that's one period, okay, or one cycle. But if you go on increasing the frequency by exactly twice, so we have a complete cycle which occurs uh, over the half period, okay, so that the rate of oscillation has increased twice. Let's say the fundamental, the fundamental frequency associated with the, the first uh, sinusoid is, uh, call it 2 pi by t naught, okay. Uh, then uh, for the second one, you can see that for the second, omega is, is twice omega naught. Omega is twice omega naught. This is again periodic. This is again periodic. The rate of oscillations have increased. It's twice the first one. So the time period uh, t is not t naught. So time period t becomes t naught by 2. So this is... Um, uh, this, 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 this has the twice the cycles, but uh, twice the number of cycles, which means the frequency is doubled, but the time period is halved. And this this uh, can, in general, be related with uh, uh, with the uh, with, with, with the kth harmonic, as such that t naught. Uh, if you have uh, uh, thrice the fundamental frequency or four times the fundamental frequency then it is still periodic. It is still periodic because in one time period, T naught, you will have how many cycles? You will have K number of cycles covering up. So uh, the period will be not T naught, it will be T naught by K for that particular harmonic. For example, this is this is the second harmonic, okay? In, in, this, in this case, this is the second harmonic, so the period becomes as half. So this is T naught by two. If it's third harmonic, there are three cycles, then becomes T naught by three. So this trend continues, okay? But the, the the frequency is related to the the, the fundamental frequency by k omega naught. Okay. So the kth harmonic, the kth harmonic pi k t is still periodic with period t naught uh, as well as it goes through exactly k number of uh, fundamental periods uh, during an interval of length t naught. Okay. So again, you see if uh, you have sine 120 hertz, uh, you have a sinusoidal signal of 120 hertz. And if she, that, that's the fundamental, and if you consider the second harmonic, which happens at 240 hertz, then 240 hertz will consist of two cycles, right? It consists of two, uh, the, 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 the frequency is, is double, so it will consist of, uh, at any interval t naught, uh, uh, which is the fundamental period of uh, 120 hertz, in 240 hertz, you will have, uh, you, you, you will have two complete cycles in one cycle, okay? The, in, in, in 240 hertz, you will have two cycles. Uh, so therefore, the, the the time period is halved. The time period is halved. Okay. So they they they, they are again um, periodic over any length of t naught. Um, so uh, next, let's uh, have a quick discussion on general complex exponential signals. Uh, up until now, we have talked of uh, exponential signals of the form. Uh, where A was constrained to be uh, complex, but uh, C was said to be equal to unity, okay? Uh, I mean, the uh, uh, the form of the signal, complex exponential signal, if you recall, that we talked of earlier is C uh, of AT, so this is my exponential signal. And uh, if I make this C, well, this C is not restricted to unity anymore. If I make this C in general to be complex, while A to be complex as well, not purely complex, it, can have real part, then we have general complex exponential signals, okay? And the most general case of complex exponentials uh, can be expressed and interpreted in terms of two cases that we have examined so far. So the first one was, if you recall in the previous video, was real exponential. And then uh, we continued our discussion with the periodic uh, complex exponential. Now, specifically consider a complex exponential, C exponential AT, where C is expressed in its polar form, so C has both imaginary and real parts, and A is also in rectangular form. So you see C as a magnitude, so this is a polar form, okay? This is a complex quantity, not in a rectangular, but uh, in Cartesian, but uh, it's, it's a polar form. So C is a magnitude, magnitude C, 
it is a mental part and it has, it has a face part okay so again it, it, it can be expressed in terms of real and imaginary quantities uh, can be bifurcated as such similarly a is consist of both real and imaginary terms and if you are going to substitute this these two parameters these two parameters in uh, in uh, your complex exponential, exponential signal of this form then you have this um, expansion okay and what you can do is you can collect uh, the magnitude parts and you can collect the um, and the face parts right and uh, you can go ahead uh, express this uh, if you expand this further in in, in euler's expansion in euler's relationship uh well what what, what we have done over here is that we simply uh, take took rt out and uh, for the the j part since you can take the j out basically you can take the j out so this j should not be here this j should be out right so this becomes ej omega naught t uh plus theta okay so now now it's correct now now you can go and we'll go ahead and expand this in terms of uh, cosine and sines okay this being the magnitude uh and this magnitude is also a function of time you can see right i mean for uh the previous cases we have considered this r to be equal to zero uh so and magnitude c was equal to one so you have simple simple cosines and sines uh but r in general could be anything okay it could be any it, it could be real quantity it, it, it's, it's a real quantity but it could be for our because over here r is defined as such it's a real quantity so but r could be real r could be sorry or could be greater than zero or r could be uh, less than zero so it could, it could be positive it could be negative and that gives further characteristics to the complex exponential it could be a decaying exponential if r is less than zero it could be a growing exponential if r is greater than zero and then uh, it has to be oscillatory because you have cosine and sine function so what i'm talking about is that look in the first figure uh, over here <coughs> r is greater than zero r is greater than zero so this envelope the dotted line shows the uh with the oscillations with a certain frequency these oscillations are growing with time okay so it might represent an oscillator which uh, uh which satisfies for example an electronic oscillator satisfying Barkhausen criteria the with time the oscillations are growing right on the other hand uh, in the second case r is less than zero so it, this is a decaying uh, sinusoid sinusoidal signal and it can represent for example a dissipative mechanical system which is dissipating energy in oscillatory fashion with time and the magnitude is going to the magnitude is going to zero okay it's time t tends to time is progressing is evolving uh, the magnitude is going to zero so you see for r equal to zero and this expression we are simply dealing with cosines and sines uh, the real and imaginary parts uh, the real and imaginary parts of complex exponential are sinusoidal so there, 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 there's no uh, decay or amplification of the oscillations it's simply sinusoids with, with, with the constant amplitudes so for r greater than zero it corresponds to sinusoidal signals multiplied by a growing exponential and for r less than zero uh, that corresponds to sinusoidal signals multiplied by a decaying exponential. So these two cases are shown in the figure below. The dashed lines in the figure corresponds to uh, the envelope, the magnitude, magnitude of CERT. This, this, these are the magnitudes. These are the magnitudes. So though in, in the figure, the dotted line are being represented by uh, this is this is what represents these. Uh, this is being, being represented by these dotted lines. Okay. It's also the magnitude of the complex exponential. So the dashed curves. Uh, they act as an envelope for the oscillatory curve in the figure and that uh, that the peaks of the oscillation just reaches these curves uh, and in this way the envelope provides us the convenient, convenient way to visualize the general trend in the amplitude of the oscillation because the, I mean the, the idea is the same uh, previously if, if uh, r is zero then you have uh, without any decay or amplification of the oscillations you have simply simple sinusoids and what you're going to have is a cosine and sines okay uh, without any, um, any change in the amplitude but if r uh, if r is uh, not zero r is uh, greater than zero then it is growing exponential if r is less than zero it is decaying exponential but these oscillations these exponentials have oscillations okay so there is certain frequency by which it is uh, that uh, the complex exponential is being represented this frequency is related by uh, to the time period by omega naught and omega naught again is defined as 2 pi by t okay where t being the fundamental period so sinusoidal signals uh, being multiplied 
are decaying exponentials are commonly referred to as damped sinusoids. So, for example, example of damped sinusoids arise in the response of RLC circuits and in the mechanical systems, for example, containing both damping and restoring forces. So, for example, in automotive suspension systems, uh, you can have frictional forces and spring restoring forces, which are going to produce damped oscillations and energy dissipates over time and the system uh, becomes stable again and with time the oscillations they go away so these kind of for example systems they have mechanisms that dissipate energy for in electronics there are resistors and mechanical system there are damping forces such as frictions or restoring forces of uh, springs so these oscillations are decaying with time okay so this this is the uh, an analogy you can draw uh, for, to compare the physical phenomena with such signals, okay, that's all.